I'm Eddie Buchanan, a Division Chief with Hanover Fire and EMS in Richmond, Virginia, and a past president of the International Society of Fire Service Instructors. The fire service has been familiar with size up for a while now, but it's important to refresh on the basics and look at how fire dynamics research has given us more tools we can use on the initial arrival. As we know, size up starts long before the call comes in. Firefighters should be familiar with the construction and occupancy types that exist in their response area. Anytime new construction occurs, you should be out making site visits to observe the construction techniques and floor plans in case you have to return for an emergency. We have discussed modern fuels in previous videos, but it's still important to remember that modern fuels release more energy faster and consume more oxygen than legacy fuels. When you couple this with larger homes and open spaces within the lightweight building construction and then put that on a smaller lot, you have a dangerous cocktail of circumstances that places firefighters and civilians at greater risk than ever before. So what does this mean when you're sizing up an incident? You can expect faster and more violent fire growth, less time to get your hand lines in position once you've opened the building, and potentially rapid changes in fire dynamics based on what you do when you arrive. These observations that we make as we go and do our 360 around the building or observing the building from the outside, traditionally that's all we see when we first get up on the scene is the outside of the building. The research allows us to marry up that outside picture with what's going on on the inside. So by looking at the research and looking at those videos, when I make a size up now, I'm looking at smoke coming out of the building and I can better predict what's happening inside that building based on what I'm seeing on the outside. So aside from the many size up considerations that we've been familiar with for years, today we'll touch on the construction and conditions, the visible and non-visible indicators, and how we use these to locate the fire in the building. As the first arriving engine approaches the scene, they must quickly determine the type of construction involved. This begins in general terms during pre-planning it gets very specific on the arrival at the incident. Remember that buildings constructed during the legacy periods are typically renovated and loaded with modern fuels. In the fire service, we're used to the what have I got and where is it going thought process during size up. We essentially conduct a visual inspection of the building and the current conditions within the building to develop the appropriate action plan to control that situation. But the research has taught us that there are more considerations that are essential to firefighter safety victim survivability, and tactical efficiency. Tactical considerations for size up are what have I got, where is it going, and how do I stop it? The company officer must take these considerations in effect when making a tactical action plan. It's not a simple, let's go in the front door with the hand line. Now there's an actual plan in place based on these considerations. There are two sides of the fire triangle that we can impact, the air and the heat. While there's little we can do about the fuel in the structure, we can impact the heat through the application of water and we can impact the air by limiting the oxygen to the fire until we have the opportunity to control the heat. With that in mind, we should observe the fire building for clues that will allow us to take advantage of how we can control that quickly. If you have smoke and fire showing, consider how is it showing? Are any of the vent openings unidirectional? This would indicate the fire is getting its air supply through another location. If you see a unidirectional vent on one side of the building, be on the lookout for an air inlet as you make your size of flap you may have the opportunity to shut down the inlet side of the flow path as you make your lap, limiting the combustion air. If you have a large volume of fire showing, you may consider a rapid exterior attack on that fire, thus rapidly controlling the heat. So we ask a few more questions during the initial size up lap. What have I got and how do I have it? And where is it going and why? With vent limited fires, we may have to work harder to understand what is happening in the fire building. So evaluating what we do not see can be equally as important. As we go, we're scanning for any signs of life, from a person standing in a window to more subtle signs of life, such as handprints in a window or the blinds in disarray. We are looking for areas within the structure where an occupant is most likely to survive. An occupant behind a closed door may find very survivable conditions, where an occupant unprotected from the flow path has little chance. As we complete our lap, we have established indicators as to what conditions might exist inside of the fire building. Aside from identifying any obvious rescues, we are working to locate where the fire is in the building. This may be obvious due to the venting fire, or we may not see obvious signs of fire at all. Because we know that fires can easily become vent limited in modern fuels, the thermal imager is a critical tool during size up. We use the thermal imager to help us identify what we cannot see during the initial evaluation of the building. 
The term nothing showing means nothing is an accurate statement in a modern fuel fire. Use the thermal imager to identify signs of a fire that might not be visible from the exterior of the building. If we don't have a clear location of the fire initially, look for signs of high pressure within the building. This will help guide you to where the initial water can do the most good. In the absence of pressure and heat, you may be dealing with an incipient fire, or a fire starved for oxygen so long that it has lost the heat necessary to support combustion. It's not uncommon for fire departments to respond to reports of a kitchen fire that's burned all day unnoticed, undiscovered, and prior to their arrival the fire self-extinguished due to the ventilation limited conditions in the fire compartment. As the size up starts to reveal a clearer picture of the incident, the incident commander begins consideration of where the fire is inside the building and what actions they'll take to control it. We use the information from our initial size up to determine our action plan. We are making an assessment of the potential occupants inside and assessing which legs of the fire triangle can be managed to reduce the release of energy inside the structure. It is based on this initial assessment that the remaining steps of the SLICE RS concept are carried out. The initial incident commander should also conduct ongoing assessments as the operations proceed. Look for changes in the neutral planes and flow paths during the operations to ensure crews are not surprised while they're operating inside. As we learn more about size up in the modern fuel environment, we must develop an eye for indicators that warn us about the fire dynamics inside. We should study as much fire footage as possible and work to identify flow paths, neutral planes, and other indicators so we can quickly see the signs that are so often overlooked in the past. This will take practice and makes for a great kitchen table drill. But with some work, we can develop our size up skills to rapidly identify potential rescues and the current status of the fire, along with how the fire will respond to our tactics. So from South Bend, Indiana, I'm Eddie Buchanan. Keep training and stay safe.